Hey everyone, welcome to another one of my unboxing videos. Hopefully you had a chance to check out your friendly local hood uh, games pre-release this past weekend for Amonkhet. Uh, otherwise, the release is this Friday and Wizards is now doing a draft weekend. So if you want those promo cards, you'll have to come in for the weekend. So we'll go ahead and get right started. Let me go ahead and lock in our handy dandy zoom. Dink. And so, for anyone who's interested, this is actually the Buy Box promo. Uh, if you pick up a full box at a physical store, it doesn't work if you buy them online, uh, you should get one of these while supplies last from your store. So, since this is a full booster box, and at this point we pretty much all know what the uncommons and commons are, uh, I'm just going to kind of breeze through those. There aren't any commons or uncommons in like the $6 price range. So I don't feel like uh, we necessarily need to take the full time to do all of them. So hopefully you guys had a good time at your pre-release events if you're able to make it. Uh, I know at my store we saw a whole bunch of Masterworks pulled. Uh, let's see, we had at least two Force of Wills. Uh, a couple of Gideons. There's the rare. Let's see, a couple of Gideons. Uh, we had one gentleman that played in four of our events and pulled Gideon each time, so he actually ended up with a playset of Gideons by the time it was all said and done. I'm usually pretty lucky, but I'm not quite that lucky. Shelter Thicket, and a first full art. Caught a whiff of a shiny back there. Let's see what we got. Sweltering Sun. And Scorched Desert is the foil. As usual, the uh, Planeswalkers in the set are the most expensive. Uh, Gideon followed by Liliana. Followed by Nyssa, who now has blue in her. Here. Regular token. I think I mentioned this on my last video, but if you pick up the uh, fat packs or quote bundles of Amonkhet, you'll actually get enough. There you go. Ah, second one. You'll get enough uh, embalm tokens to cover everything that has embalm. Uh, so you'll actually have zombie tokens right on the bat. You don't have to worry about trying to find individual packs for them or uh, buying the loose ones. And if you're someone who's going to play a lot of Embalm, it's going to be the fastest method. Never. Don't care. I like the Embalm mechanic. I think it's fun. Um, it's different. We haven't technically had anything exactly like it. Uh, we have Undying, which is kind of similar. And we also have flashbacks, so it's kind of flashbacks for zombie, or flashbacks for creatures, which is kind of cool. There we go, foil rare, sandworm convergence, and another full one. Don't know what our mythic's gonna be in this one. Hopefully it's a planeswalker. I do, I'm not sure how I feel about these. Uh, part of me is just use a dice or token so we don't have little pieces of paper all over the place. Leon's Mastery, basic, and another one of those. My random stack of commons and uncommons are kind of sliding. As usual, the uh, goal is to hit this video at uh, 12 minutes or less, so I don't waste a whole bunch of guys. There's the first mythic, Cruel Reality. Unfortunately, um, it's one of the mythics that's not really high up there in price. I hate these packs sometimes. And I'm just way too lazy to go get um, scissors or straight edge. Uh, Gideon's Invention, Intervention, sorry, Synchronized Strike is a foily we got. Um, if I was opening like Alpha, Beta, Revised, something like that, I would do the whole white cotton gloves and knives and all that sort of stuff. 
Uh, I'm opening up a random box of Amonkhet where the most expensive card potentially is about $300, Oracle's Vault. Um, if you pull a Force of Will, which I'm not sure what the likelihood of pulling specifically Force of Will, Wizards won't talk about um, specific drop rates, uh, but the best we've been able to figure out is Masterworks themselves show up in approximately one out of every three booster boxes. New perspectives and another full art. I'm just going to kind of make my random pile of commons and uncommons. So, and then you've got, what is it, 20, I want to say, Masterwork cards in the set that have their own rarity. Mouth, Cartouche's Strength. I like the Cartouches, I also like them in foil. So basically the likelihood, actually I'm impressed by the fact that we had two Force of Wills pulled. Shadow of the Grave. Let's see, we've got about half our time used up so far and I'm about halfway through. There you go. Potential uh, commander card. Anytime you can have a commander that comes out for only two is nice. I know a lot of people, oh, ah, there we go. Wow, awesome, Gideon, woo! Uh, that is for the benefit of the people that have complained in past videos that I'm not exuberant enough when I pull kind of the chase rares out of the set. So that's for you guys. Thanks for that feedback. But in all seriousness, Gideon is pretty sweet. Still looking forward to see if anyone actually does tribal Gideon in standard and whether or not that's actually like a thing. There we go. Another non-basic. See, that's my second mythic. I believe there's supposed to be two or three in a box. The problem with running a whole bunch of different games and opening up a whole bunch of different cards from different games, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Y Swords, etc., etc., is after a while I can't remember the ratios on everything and it all kind of blurs together. Another Full Art Land. Full Art Land does seem to be about one in four, which is what Wizards told us. Uh, that holds true even in the fat packs. Uh, sorry, bundles. So if you pick up a bundle, um, it's not going to have a full stack of uh, Full Art Land in it. It's actually going to be a mix. I'm starting to get worried we weren't going to get very many non-basic lands. I, on the one hand, I'm glad they brought back cycling and they have cycling lands. That's really awesome. On the other hand, it's not a mechanic I've ever personally cared for. It's just, it's not my play style. Nothing against it. It's a good play style. It's very effective. Um, I just don't use it. But especially later in the game when you have plenty of land out and you'd rather just get that extra card draw. It's particularly helpful. Oh yay, the buy box promo. But at least I got a foil out of it. I always hate actually pulling the cards out of the promo cards that you would have ended up with anyway. There's only a few times where I've been okay with that. Goblin Rabble Master was the buy box promo uh, for that set. And he was also, in, of course he was in the set. And he was one of my favorite goblins. Ah, there we go. Glorious End. That should be the last of the mythics in here. Hey! That works. I'm going to have to bring this up to my eyes to actually tell which one this is because they're new. The new way they're written is ridiculously hard to make out. I, honest to crud, cannot read. Hazard the Reverend. 
So, woo, awesome. Uh, looks like he's right around $40. I have a cheat sheet next to me. I do not have all these prices memorized. But this is about as good of a box as I can get. I uh, got our, all of our Mythics, pulled a uh, Masterwork. Not one of the super, super high expensive ones, but anytime you pull a Masterwork, it's nice. Insult. Pulled a Gideon. That's awesome. I'm trying to think if there's anything in particular that would make this super awesome. There, well, that works. But I think short of pulling another um, Planeswalker, Liliana would be nice. I just don't get why Wizards picked out some of the cards they did for the um, Masterworks this time. Um, not because necessarily some of them were like less expensive or they're, or different rarities than they've necessarily done before. I'm I'm okay with that. I just don't I can't figure out what the theme was. Uh, Zendikar, you had lands, made sense. Uh, Amonkhet, I mean sorry, that's what happens when I'm opening Amonkhet. Um, uh, Kaladesh was all uh, artifact based, and um, wow. This is what happens when I do two things at once. Apparently I can't open packs and remember the names of sets at the same time. But they were all artifacts and items and things like that, which made sense because you're inventions. That's the word I want. Um, they were all inventions. And that, of course, made sense in the set. And I got the foil. Um, this one just seems to be random. Um, the closest thing I have maybe kind of come up with is that it's all based around what's powerful. Uh, the whole idea that Nicobolus is coming back as a god pharaoh. And another foil. Uh, in the next set. So he's got a whole bunch of like ridiculously powerful cards. It is kind of nice though that we're getting some uh, Masterwork cards that are not in the ridiculously expensive range. So if you just like to foil out your stuff and make things look nice, um, it's not stupidly expensive. And got another full art land. And apparently I'm taking too much time because I already have people at our store's front door asking to come in. We'll give them just a minute or two before I do because I've only got a few cards left. I feel like there's way more Mythics in here than I was expecting. And that's pretty awesome. Let's see, we're down to our last five it looks like. And four, unless I'm miscounting, which happens. There we go. And regular one. Three. Now I'm just trying to get through the pack, so I'm running out of interesting random things to talk about. There we go, Glyph Keeper. Regular land. Now the phone's ringing because everything's happening simultaneously at the store. This is why I traditionally film in our bathroom and why it kind of echoes. There's that one and a foil rare. Last pack, we'll see what we got. And then I will go answer our phone to find out who's calling me two minutes after we open. And there we go. So that was our box of Amonkhet. Uh, as a reminder, the set does come out this Friday. You can play uh, release events this weekend at your local gaming stores. And now I'm gonna go actually open my store and help the customers that are very nicely waited for me to finish this video. Have a good day, guys.